video, it's all about what I did to make this stuff the way it is here. So, what you're looking at here is a gray water garden. So, the hose has been over there. It was a little closer at one point, and it actually flooded out another hole I had over there. Completely just burned it up. So the theory here is I've been moving that hose around this entire area all around here for about a year and a half and a lot around here, right? So I didn't even dig holes. I just dug, a, dug the little bit of dirt and just put it in there and that was it. Six holes, one collapsed. This one's a bizarro world here. So this one, I think these were the smallest ones and they pretty much started budding two to three weeks before these did, right? And if you take like a really good look at these here, is that the right way? Then you can see you know, there's like a little brown hair here and there. But now you go over here and these things are just keep rocking. Like, it's crazy. They like haven't slowed down a bit. So they started two or three weeks before and they're just going like freaking mad. Like that from there over the other side, you know, I mean, we're talking about something like it. it's like that like this is this is a freaking monster right and it's just see there's two of them one two just poking up and just insane covered in freaking crystals just beautiful stuff right and this is called oregon diesel and i don't know anything about it other than it looks freaking amazing and it seems to love it whatever i'm doing it's loving it so i had some problems with rabbits the rabbits hit this one over here real hard i mean it's just sad there's just all kinds of sticks here the the rabbits hit this one a little bit i think like i don't know five or six stalks got taken down I hit this one a little bit. Now this one's weird too because I don't know what's going on. This one had some problems, but it's just been tripping like the whole time. Like this whole time, it just doesn't look like any other one. It's just completely tripping. But you know, I mean, that's just one solid and just stinky. Just really, really like a. A grapey, fruity smell. Really pungent. And you can see the crystals on there is just freaking crazy. So right now it's, I think it's like September 14th. Okay, so it's literally like, like about halfway through September almost. And this is where we're at. You're like, look at this one. It starts all the way down there. It just goes and goes and goes and goes and goes all the way. Yeah. So I had some other problems. I had some mites a couple times. Weird mites. So I saw them one day. And I went into town to get the mite spray. And it rained a little bit. And I came back and the mites were pretty much all gone. I think the rain was a little acidic and it just probably just sizzled them. There was a few, so I never sprayed the, the plants directly. I only ever had to spray, spray the ground. So then they came back again and they were all right here like crazy, like, the, like millions of them, like the ground just moving with them and just going up. And going into this first layer and being all on the caging and stuff. So I came out here. I sprayed it all down. Not getting it up into the layers of here at all. You know, just down there. 
And then I brought my leaf blower out to blow the underside if there is any left. And I haven't seen any since. So I do keep a pretty close eye on them. Uh, I keeping the stuff out of them. It's getting going to be cold coming up here for about three days straight. And I don't know if they're going to make it through cold days and cold nights for three days. I mean, we will see. But if I can make it through those three days, there's like a full another week of like 80s, right? Going all the way into October. So all the way into fall. And that's really where I want to go with these. I just, uh, you know, I have a little bit of a security in place, you know, basically so many messes around that I'm bound to get hurt <laughs> automatically. <laughs> Want to say that, but I'm not going to put this video out until they're already down. So <laughs> I already put one video out about them um, and then I started thinking about it. I was going to document them all and I'm like, you know, if I put out a bunch of videos about these, then a bunch of people that might see them that might be around that could just like yoink, you know? So I refrained from making any more videos but there still is that one so i still have a little bit of a concern but like i said if somebody does get them they're probably not gonna be well i mean they might scream so loud i just come out here so they might not get away but you know hopefully nobody just hopefully just leave my shit alone but that isn't the way people are <laughs> but these things i'm telling you what I plan on doing is I plan on buying a smusher. So, all right, so I'm gonna do, I haven't really followed these. I had to build this whole structure here because the rabbits, the rabbits were just hitting me hard and it cost me about 300 bucks in the wiring. I'm catching mice just because they're out here and I'm just, you know, anti-mice. They're, they're not affecting this at all, the rabbits. So this whole thing, and this fence is actually practice. This plywood fence, or excuse me, pallet wood fence, pallet fence. I now have a concept, like this whole area that I have out here, this is my flower garden that's supposed to have like, just crazy flowers, bees, seasonal stuff like this, right? But just, you know, this whole thing here, right? And it's gonna need this animal proof fencing even more than this because I wanna keep the mice out of the next one. And it can happen, but I have to go down, but I already have a trench all the way around here. I have to put a trench in here on that back side but i don't know if my back is going to be done in time to do that to do this this year or not but the plan is is these the pallets when you stack them next to each other like this and then you just screw them together they let you know in like three layers three deep you get structure that doesn't really blow down i've got this here because i get crazy winds and i didn't really fully connect everything like i learned some lessons connecting this now i have the whole plan on how to all connect this and have it be a legitimate fence without digging it into the ground without putting any kind of footing then you go around the outside with this this down into the ground right and then above this a layer of probably like six inch uh just straight flat metal so because the mice can crawl this so you got this down in the ground so nothing can freaking go past it or under it and then it comes all the way up to a you know about probably about here and about here you got another layer of metal so nothing that can climb this can climb that and that's what i plan on doing for this whole entire area right here I don't know when I'll get that done, but I pretty much came to the conclusion that this system with the pallets is actually a pretty good way to build a fence, cheap, quick, and easy, that will actually stand up. And the way is you just stagger them, 
right? And then you put one here and then you screw it to this one and then you just stagger them. So this every seam is covered and you do three layers and they're screwed together like this. And the, they, they just, cause they're screwed together and it's such a wide thing. Like you would have to pick up the outside to be able to tip over. You see? So yeah, I'll make a whole video about when I'm doing that, but I'm just giving a heads up now because somebody else might want to do it because I mean, literally out here, you got, you can't do anything like this and uh, expect the animals not to eat it. So here's how I am feeding my plants, right? So this is my wet composter or gray water system. So I just got done doing dishes. So all the dish water goes in there, boom. That's what's feeding the plants. Oh, and what I call coffee tea. So this is my coffee grounds, and then just every once in a while, a little piece of food or whatever end up in there. So a couple times in the beginning of the planting, I put that directly on the plants. Not, I mean, watered them with it when it was really hot a couple times as like a booster. So, and then, so this hose that runs right here, that's what supplies. So what's going on in that hose is the magic. But the, what I've really come to realize what's going on here is that I'm actually feeding the soil, right? So here's where the water is. Now, earlier in the summer, it was more over here, but now I moved it back and it actually flooded another hole over there and burned up the plant. So whatever's coming out of there is definitely hot, fertilizer-wise. So the fact that it's going down over there, it's feeding the soil. That's what my concept is. Like, so this whole area has just been kept wet with that hose since you know i've been moving that hose around this whole area for a year and a half right but now it's just keeping a water table but then there's just some goodness that's growing down in the soil there and a lot of people when they put these in they'll dig huge holes and they'll put all kinds of soil and amendments you know organic or not and that's how they start. I didn't do any of that. All I did was barely dig a little hole, put the, put the little cup that I got in the hole. That's it, that's as big as I dug it, okay? And they're doing freaking amazing. And I haven't had to do, I mean, I you know, the training of them into this shape is uh, basically just to give them a lot of structure because it's really windy out here. So if I just let them go and they were super tall, like I don't know what would happen. But that just, to me, is a little more manageable. Like, I have a way to, like, tie them down and pull them apart and train them over and probably end up with a... But this is the weirdest thing. These have been budding two or three weeks before those. And they're just going crazy. Everything's going crazy now. Just turn purple like crazy. <music> that are smashed down those all cover the ground really good and reflect the light and the same with the fence so it's it's notably warmer over here and that's a good thing typically even when it was really hot they were just freaking 
cranking so i mean it hot it was like 120 degrees over here in a few days all right is the like the second day of uh fall yesterday i had oh maybe today too i thought there would be oh yeah today as well oh wow oh uh, yeah i got these fruit flies like crazy which might be the reason why i actually cut these down because i don't know what these fruit flies are gonna do but they're definitely probably not doing me any favors I mean, they're all over this one pretty hardcore so i don't know if they lay their eggs in there or if they're just chilling because it's nice i just don't know but i was out here all day yesterday chasing them off just like this you know just like this all day i mean not standing here 20 you know <clears throat> i come out here and knock Knock the freaking flies off. Get them to the point where there wasn't any left. Go do something. Come back an hour or so later. And they'd all be back. I sprayed the ground with this spray stuff that I have. That worked great on the, the ground uh, mites. But it doesn't seem to be doing anything to catch these guys here at all. So they're freaking like, I don't know, they're just all over in this wood. You can just see them just completely freaking, I mean, it's, this is the second time these things have popped out. The first time this whole wall over here was infested with them and they didn't really mess with the plants, but now I see them on the plants. So I don't know what I'm going to do. I mean, I might just take, this stuff's looking like, I mean, it's definitely can be taken, but it also can go longer too. I mean, so I've been like trying to get it opened up. Like the plant was per, this one specifically, I would, it just was so tight right like this was just solid so i've been pulling down on this like training them down the bigger ones to try to get them out of the way and let the air get in there a little bit better but they are definitely i mean just freaking awesome quality and they could be considered done some look doneer than others, like this one and like that one there. But this one here don't look too done. And these here have been just going crazy still. Look at how big that is. I mean, it's just a monster. Just one giant freaking. I don't, know. And I don't know if the bugs are getting into the buds and laying freaking uh, eggs and then those eggs are going to hatch and the buds are going to be full of larvae. I did find a caterpillar in here yesterday. I'm not quite sure how that all happened because it was like up in here. And there's been a lot of... Uh, stuff munching on the leaves which i think to a certain extent is actually a good thing like if they're munching on these big leaves just a little bit <clears throat> kind of like that the plant's gonna freaking respond to that by secreting things that make it more potent so just a little shock damage as long as they're not freaking just stripping the plant freaking down to nothing but I'm super worried about these little, which I think are just fruit flies type bugs, getting like eggs in the freaking, in the buds. Like there's one now, all the way down in there, not wanting to go away. I don't know if they're fucking, I don't know what they're doing. But, see, I've got some of these pulled way down. 
They're not even up in straight anymore, especially this side. I was trying to get the, the air to be able to get in there. It was so dense and it was raining for a few days. But they made it through that without any problems. So, but now we are battling freaking fruit flies. You see there's another one that's pulled way down. It's almost sideways now. Yeah, that's nice stuff though. Yeah, it's the never ending question. So when the when those when they started ooh, there's two right there. When they started yesterday I pulled some peppermint oil and I put it on these all around peppermint oil, peppermint oil. Just a drip. And the leaves that touched it got burned and it didn't really do anything. So the only thing that I've been able to do to affect these fruit flies is just chasing them off. I don't even know if they're doing anything bad or not, but I mean, I just don't want bugs on my plants. I don't want larvae. I don't know how fruit flies work. Is there some sort of larva that's going to like, you know, they're going to lay eggs inside the buds and then the freaking larva is going to grow in there. You know, I there's one right there. So I don't know. It might be the reason why I take them down. I was ready to leave them, but better safe than sorry. Ain't that thing. Yeah. That stinks out here like the frickin' uh, the pesticide I sprayed on the floor. This is the weirdest bud. And so I sprayed the ground with this stuff and you know just a sprayer and then a, a kind of little mist might have hit some of the lower stuff maybe you know i'm just spraying here spraying here and there's a fog so i don't think that stuff will just last forever but definitely giving it a few days because i can smell it over here right now so I want to give it a few days for that just to, like, kind of, you know, go away. If I did get any on there, like, it's not going to rain, but it just, like, just the deterioration wind and, you know, the sun and all that stuff isn't just going to last forever. Hopefully, it's organic, so it should, it should, uh, it should uh, dissolve or whatever. I've been doing a lot of this, grabbing them leaves and pulling them to try to get, you know, look down in there, make sure nothing's turning rotten, make sure there's no bugs in there crawling around. And then I pull the ones that are like here all the way down and they just have been staying. So this one's like almost horizontal now. All right. There goes a... Yeah, there's some damage from the pepper and the oil. It just burned the leaf up. But no buds got it. A couple leaves got it. And it didn't help at all, because they're still over here. Those bugs lasted one day last time, and they've been now it's day two. I'm like a little freaked out. I chased them off so many times yesterday. It does seem like there's maybe a little less right now. Because yesterday it was, it was super infested. I can only see a few over there now. But every time I shake, I see them come off. And they go to this one, I shake. And they go back over this one, I shake. <laughs> Little bastards. There's a lot. Holy cow. Alright. 
Okay, I actually just looked these bugs up. I don't know why I didn't do that yesterday, but I did today. And basically it's because of my wet composting system. So they're able to respawn in the ground. They're not leaving larvae in here. That was my concern. So they're super annoying, but I don't think they're damaging, right? So I'm wasting my time. I mean, it's probably good to not let them just camp on here because they do probably defecate or something. I don't know that the article didn't say, but yeah. And this is just, it is what it is. I, I have it. The system is set up. It's working. I'm not changing anything just because the bugs. I did spray some stuff that might slow them down. There does seem to be a few of us today, but I mean, I can just see them like... They're just, they love it up here on the wood. So they're in the ground, but then they kick it on everything around them. So relatively harmless, hopefully. So yeah, there's one right, right there. Like, well, what's it doing? Is it doing anything? There's another one down there just cruising around. Uh, they just might be sitting in the sun. Not sure. I don't like them. All right, it is harvest day for most of this stuff. I just kind of was looking at it last night and was like, yeah, it kind of looks like it's almost all pretty much done. It just wrapped up, I mean, there's some little white hairs that like almost, there's a couple new white hairs here and there. I mean, I guess it could go longer, but like that one there has completely, that one's almost completely, I don't know. We're into a warm cycle now, but I'm just, I'm just thinking it's a good time. But now that I'm looking at it this morning, I'm having second, <laughs> I'm having second thoughts. But like this one here, like I'm almost 100% positive that it hasn't done anything. There's some weird bug on there. And this one here, I mean, they just seem to be like, I don't know. Now I'm having second thoughts. I was all ready to harvest this stuff today, but now I'm coming out here and seeing a bunch of new. I mean, that one looks done. That looks pretty much done. I'm getting attacked by a fly here. <clears throat> this thing bite and leave pretty nasty little marks. Kind of, to, kind of over that. I don't know. I don't know. They're definitely got a bunch of white hairs on them. So I think maybe I should go with my my indication what I had last night. I was pretty sure I was like they aren't gonna do much. There's all these damn bugs and basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to take them down and I'm going to leave the bottom. So there'll still be stuff out here going, but the majority of it is, I don't know, I mean, when I look at this one here, it started like two, three weeks before the rest of them and just doesn't really show much signs of slowing down that's the like i don't know i should leave that one maybe <laughs> it's still just going like crazy there's hardly any brown hairs on it now this one it gets a lot more dark just being this much shorter and this much closer to the wall and the fence really not the wall is Shows a lot signs of slowing down. 
I don't know, maybe I'll just take the, that one and leave that one. Take all the tops off everything else. And call it good. It's supposed to be nice for so long. I mean, I legitimately could just leave this and leave it and leave it. But at some point, there's diminishing returns. I mean, I think it's been here for four months. Solid, solid uh, two months of budding. So, just, yeah. There's definitely more brown than there is white. There's enough white to justify leaving it, but like I said, I'm going to leave some, so. Yeah, I think I've talked myself back into harvesting. <laughs> I came out here ready to harvest, looked around, and was like, oh no, maybe not. And then I changed my mind back. <laughs> All right. It's going to be a fun day. All right. So, this is actually under my bed. It was the only place I really could think of that had the potential for climate control and where I actually had the room with a bunch of places to mount shit. So, seems to be working pretty good. Quite a bit here. This is just the tops. Okay, so this is what I left after the first harvest. And I just had to leave this one. Because it's just going nuts. I, and really, it just does, it shows barely any signs of slowing down. I mean, it's like it like... 10 weeks or something like that all right so then here's this one i took it back all the tops and just cleaned it up a little bit and that's pretty much what i did to all these and the ones the rabbits just annihilated Rabbits just did a number on this one. And this one, really. There's quite a bit of rabbit damage. You can see it now. There's here and here and here and here. This is freaking rabbits. But we're supposed to have like two more weeks of super nice weather. So all this looks done. But I have to imagine because when you go by the principle of pruning promotes growth. So all these are just really pruned. So now, hopefully, the little scrappies, all the little scrappy stuff that was low, that was just little teeny stuff, hopefully all that will fill in. And I won't have any real little scrappy stuff. You know, that's the concept here. I don't know. This strain is pretty amazing. I'm pretty happy with it. Let's see what it can do. All right. This is 15 days after I cut the tops off of them. And I'm going to go here in a little bit and take all the stuff that looks pretty done off this. I I think I'm gonna take this whole thing, although it's still going. It's still got white hairs popping. Freaking like 12, I don't know, 13 weeks later. It's just freaking nuts though. It's just, I don't know if I'm gonna take it down or let it keep going. The weather has just been continuing to be good so but the bunch there I'm taking for sure this year looks like it's probably most of that's probably good to go and a bunch on there most of that's good to go I'm pretty sure but there is like a whole nother layer on the bottom that I'm going to leave. So, but a lot of this stuff is just looking purpley and chunky. 
it filled in nicely over the past 15 days. And then this one here, this one's actually got some white hair left on a few of these, so I might not even touch this. I might just let this thing keep going because it's sad. There, maybe I could take like one or two little off, but you know, I think that it could just go a little bit longer. Maybe I can get a whole third crop out of the bottoms of this one, that one, and the bottom of this one. And this one. Get out of my freaking plant. Freaking burglars. Yeah, this thing's just kind of an anomaly. So I think I might, I don't know, I might leave it, I might take it. I'm a little worried that it's just going to get some funk in the middle and I won't even notice it. But it's so nice. And it's just a major, it's just thick all the way around. And now it's got these coming off it because I've been tugging on them to look in there. Now, the more I tug on it, the more the one on the inside there kind of pops up a little bit. But, I mean, this is just crazy. The other one that was right here, it, uh, it was okay. It wasn't this nice. It could have been left longer, but it was, it was kind of hogging some of the light on this one. So, I think I did the right thing. So, this is what it looks like after the second harvest. Now, it's about, it's coming up on four o'clock right now, and this thing is already in the shade. It's just still going. I'm just going to keep it rocking. Why not? But this all got taken off. I think I got from the first cropping, I think I got like around a pound. And I'm guessing that this cropping, I just got about a quarter pound. So... And then between everything else out here, I would say I'll probably end up getting, well, that alone is probably three, three ounces, maybe a little more. And this is probably a couple ounces, maybe an ounce. So, yeah, maybe five, six ounces still left. And this method of... Uh, <clears throat> cropping and then let them go so it was 16 days from when I took the first ones off till I take the second ones off and, and the really what's nice about this is I haven't got many little scrappies a lot of times when you crop crop you get a lot of little scrappy buds they're just little teeny like things that come off the bottom well, all those are like plumping up. Like I haven't taken, like the number of little scrappy buds I have right now is so low, it's ridiculous. I mean, it's like a handful of little scrappy buds. And most of them are just like, you know, like I cut off a branch or something like that. And then there was a little one on the bottom, you know, they kind of missed because I've been trying to leave those. I mean, there's still quite, you know, all these are, you know, a couple of these could have gone today, but, you know, I'm going to just let them plump up. Let them plump up. I mean, the weather is just going mad, so I'm going to rock with it. I took a little bit off this, not much. This one, uh, hopefully these will fill in nice. So, yeah, I'm pretty stoked. <laughs> the weather keeps going like this, though. There might be a fourth, because <laughs> here's if, if all this stuff is like the third, right? And, and the top of that's the third. There's still the stuff all the way down there on the bottom. <laughs> it could still be like a literally, depending on the weather, it could be a fourth wave, a fourth flush. But yeah, this thing's just nuts. I mean, just absolutely nuts. Like, this is so big. And juicy. 
There is bugs. Oh, they're gone now. But I've been tugging on this for weeks now. And the more I tug on that one, the more that little one right there is growing. <laughs> that little guy right there has just been popping up. He's like, yeah, open it up. Let me get up out of here. This is crazy. Just stinky. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, these are these are super plump. I could have taken those, but I figured just let these up here plump up a little more too. Yeah, it's a great way to do it if you got the weather going your way. You know, have little scrappies. Okay, it's uh, I think it's the 16th of October. It's Monday, so big day the final final day is Friday this Friday every day this week will be 80 except Friday will be 70 and then Saturday 60 and pretty much 60s oh for about four or five months so I will be taking this all in 100% on Friday at some point on Friday this will be my my Friday project I'll get all these. And you see this all poop right there? That little bird poop? Like that was the center of that bud when that bird pooped on it. So that's how much that's grown. And that was like right before the first harvest. So it's already grown that much. So yeah, there's been these little flying bugs. Those things have always been kind of a hassle. I think that might be where the most scrappies come from, is right there. But some, these are all pretty nice. Pretty much all 100% nice. And this is some crazy stuff. It's just gnarling. Just gnarling. It gets kind of a weird, these, these buds get kind of a weird feeling that we're like super scrappy and then they've just filled in this whole time. They kind of feel different than a normal bud. But the plan for all this is to squish it. So what I think is a rosin press method I'm gonna try to do. But this is this one's crazy. This is just was so scrappy and it's just like it's just so filled in now. And each one of those little things is just, I don't, is this as filled in as it possibly could be. And this one is crazy too. I mean, this thing was just fully scrappy. Just nothing. And now every single one of those has just got nice resistance to it. You know, it's got something there. These here are the ones I watch because those looked pretty pretty pathetic but and then there's Budzilla that's the <laughs> Bugzilla silly bugs I'm over here knocking them off a few times a day but this thing's it's like 3 30 p.m. right now and it's already out of the sun <laughs> so it's not getting much sun at all but it's still got white white hairs popping Is that not crazy or what? This thing is just nuts. But yeah, just a couple more days. And then a couple more days after that, the movie will come out. Grey Water Ganja, the movie. October 21st, 2022. I don't know if the smoke is gonna really pick up on this shot, but it's pretty smoky. And it's going to be dumping tonight. So it is the final harvest of the season. And everything looks like it's pretty much ready to be harvested. That 
really wasn't the plan, but when I started cutting the stuff down, I started seeing a bunch of little bugs. They're pretty much like leaf bugs, so by the time I got uh, them cut, I don't really see any more. They all came off of the trimming. All right, looking pretty shabby. <laughs> the final the thing, the winner. This thing got so huge it won. It wasn't even the biggest plant, but that is the biggest bud by far. This thing is just absolutely crazy. It's just going every which way. I think I'm gonna have to whack it apart. I was gonna try to just print it all in one and just have one big, but that's just ridiculous. That's just gonna be way too much work and probably cause problems because there's probably bugs in there. There's that big bud all broke down. There's the very tip. Nice, huh? There's a few tips here that are pretty nice, actually. Yeah, it's actually a pretty nice bud. Ah, smell o vision Okay, everything's into the curing phase. I never did weigh it. I'm guessing there's probably a pound and a half or ish around. So, and this, this jar is just like the tip of that huge bud. That's all that's in there. But I do have a couple of them marked. So I have the big bud marked. And then I think I have, yeah, the third harvest marked. So the first harvest and the second harvest were all pretty similar. They all pretty much just look like this. Very nice, nice buds. The third harvest, that's, you know, that's your scrappies. I did have, uh, I got four jars with scrappies. So four scrappy jars and then these, these with the, uh, with that big bud, they're not very full either. But. I just wanted to keep them separate to kind of see how that stuff turned out versus the other stuff. Because it budded for a full 12 weeks. 13 weeks, maybe. So, so this is the end of the video. The total expense that I spent on non-reusable... So the initial purchase of the clones was 120 bucks, and then I bought the rabbit uh, deterrent that didn't work at all, and I think that was like 35 bucks or something like that. I'm sure I bought these jars, and I bought some pruning shears, and I bought the welded wire fence, but all that stuff I can reuse, so I don't really count these jars as an expense because they're reusable. So overall, I spent a little over 150 bucks total. I got 24 jars. And what I'm gonna do with this is the next step in months, cause this is gonna cure for months, cause there's no way to flush outdoor uh, growing cannabis. You can't flush it out. So what you wanna do is you wanna put a nice long cure on it. So the Enzymes can break down all the nutrients in there that you really don't want to. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it, but it's just going to be a better experience. So once the curing process is done, then I'm going to buy a rosin press. And I'm going to smash this and turn it into solventless concentrate. And I'm actually then, once I have that equipment, I'm going to just move over to that system and stop using the solvent 
uh, concentrate as regularly as I do now, just because this is, you know, a little, little cleaner. On some levels, on other levels, leaves a little more uh, stuff in there, but, and then, you know, the concentrates are pretty good. There's probably not much residual actual chemicals in there, but still, it's just, you know, you know, all right? So there's the video. There's the movie. Like and subscribe. Have a wonderful day. Legalization is the only sane path forwards on every level.